Hi there, and welcome to Baseball by Design. I am Paul Caputo, broadcasting live, as always, from the Helmet Sunday Hall of Fame in my basement in Fort Collins, Colorado. I'm so pleased to be joined right now by my friend Todd Radom, the great graphic designer who's done so much work throughout sports, not just minor league baseball, responsible, of course, for one of my all-time favorite logos, the Brooklyn Cyclones, but then just so much work with Major League Baseball and Super Bowls and, and the big three, three-on-three basketball league, author of author or co-author of a couple of books, The uh, Fabric of the Game with our mutual friend, Chris Creamer, Winning Ugly, which is an awesome collection of, uh, of bizarre and sort of hilarious Major League Baseball uniforms over the years. So it's just, you know, such an honor to have a superstar of the graphic design world, Todd Radom, joining me here once again, also notable for being my guest on episode two of the podcast of Baseball by Design. So Todd, thank you for coming back. Paul, thank you so much. Thank you for the kind words. It is good to be back. And uh, number two, I'm thinking of um, the great Bob Shepard announcing Derek Jeter now. Number two. (laughs) Uh, you promised uh, on the second episode of Baseball by Design that you would come back someday as a guest. On episode 58, we decided, and we were going to talk about our favorite ligatures. So yes. we're, we're not quite to episode 58 yet, so you've got some time before that episode comes. We're here to talk about the Wichita Wind Surge, whose logo you created. It replaced, I can't help but notice, Todd, that you are wearing a New Orleans Baby Cakes sweatshirt right now. So yes. here, this this Wichita Wind Surge logo which is notable for not being a wacky minor league baseball logo. It's a much more serious approach to graphic design and and branding for for a team. Replaced probably the poster child for the wacky era of minor league baseball branding. When the New Orleans Baby Cakes moved to Wichita, they were a triple-A team. And then in the the Vogon Destructor Fleet reshuffle of minor league baseball, they became a double-A team. And then they started playing in their brand new stadium to go with their brand new logo in their brand new city. And you helped shepherd that process along. So I think with all of that, what's most notable, obviously, when people think of Wichita, Kansas, the first thing they think of, of course, is Pegasus. So can you talk about how Pegasus came to be involved in Wichita Wind Surge's logo? Well, the first thing I need to say when we talk about the Wichita Wind Surge is uh, we talk about Lou Schweckheimer, the uh, late owner of the club, a dear friend man who sent me this shirt when this project got started. (laughs) So that's why I'm wearing it here today. And I think about Lou each and every day. Um, So a couple of things I had, I had been to Wichita previously. Um, I remember going and speaking to a design group there in January of 2017. This project got launched, you know, 2018. So um, I had a little bit of knowledge about what Wichita was all about, having spent a couple of days there and spent a couple of days with locals and all of that. But uh, Pegasus involves a couple of things. Number one, I think um, it's interesting for people who are really not familiar with Wichita, Kansas. It is the 50th biggest city in the United States. So it's sort of this regional powerhouse. It punches above its weight in a lot of ways. It is the aviation capital of the world. Um, Some significant uh, aviation companies there, great deep history of uh, innovation in uh, air travel and uh, even aerospace, if I'm not mistaken. So when you think about the image of Pegasus, uh, this this, eternal image, like very aspirational, um, it seemed like a really good place to go. Now, a couple of things to note. Number one, uh, Lou's vision for the club was really all about, because of the fact that it's a significant regional market, to run with something that was, um, I think, you know, I I hesitate to use words like dignified and traditional, but maybe a little bit more major league, which is why he brought me into the process. Um, And, you know, we had gone through Uh, I think a number of, I mean, Pegasus just really clicked pretty early on once we knew what we were talking about because of the fact that uh, there's not a whole lot of barriers to entry. It has local relevance and the idea of using something with wings. It's really pretty cool. It's a, it's, it's a great connection. Obviously I was, you know, I'm joking when I say that everyone, the first (laughs) thing people think of when they think of Wichita is Pegasus, but you know, now they do. 
well, of course there's this association, right? Because of the minor league baseball team there. And as you know, my, my whole ethos for this, this podcast is you can tell the story of America by understanding why minor league teams are called what they're called and why they have the logos that they have. So to have a story that's that rich in terms of its connection to a city is just great. Like it's so minor league baseball to me, right? And to, to think about people now understand more about, about Wichita's aviation connection. And that's, you know, that's, I think that that's really a, a terrific move for this brand because previous teams in Wichita, with the exception of the wing nuts that also made that connection to the, uh, to the aviation industry, but previous brands in Wichita have had sort of horse-based themes. And so this Pegasus is sort of a connection to, you know, like the Wranglers or the sort of old West uh, theme that you've seen with previous teams in, in Wichita. I assume Todd, that that was intentional. Well, to a certain extent, Paul, I mean, one of the, one of the things that the ownership group found out uh, and the, the club found out, not just the ownership part of it, was that uh, this is a city on the move. It is dynamic. It is innovative. You know, especially for those of us, I'm a New York guy. I know you're originally a Philly area guy. Um, you know, what are, our, what are our preconceptions of what, the, what this part of the country is all about? The Plains, you know, it's maybe even not even the Midwest. Um, and I think that, that one of the early uh, consensus was reached pretty early on in the process that the city did not want to be known as Cowtown, didn't want Wild West imagery, didn't want horses and lassos and wranglers, which the club was, uh, you know, the, the, the most recent minor league club was. There was an Aeros club, A-E-R-O-S, very progressive, very, you know, um, aerodynamic. So, yeah, I mean, it ties into that in kind of a subtle way, but uh, moves well past that, to say the least. For sure, for sure. So that's the visual of Pegasus there, but then there's the name as well, which you were, not every designer is, is gifted the advantage of working with the team on developing the name as well. Sometimes, you know, I imagine many designers are just handed a name and asked, please design us a logo. You got to know, uh, you know, when we talked for the article that I wrote uh, on sportslogos.net, I still remember writing this article, by the way, I have weird visuals with these articles. Sometimes I was sitting in a McDonald's while I was waiting for my daughter to finish with a high school project. <laughs> and so I needed somewhere where there was Wi-Fi. So I wrote that article while drinking free soda refills in a McDonald's. <laughs> and I, I will, I'll interject and tell you that I remember talking with you uh, and I was in a hotel room in Washington during the world series in 2019. I was a couple of blocks away from the white house. So I think of being in this beautiful hotel, like five-star hotel, a couple of blocks from the White House, all kinds of weird things going on, like the day of game four of the 2019 World Series. That is wild. I was in a, I was in a McDonald's in Wellington, Colorado, like 30 <laughs> miles from the Wyoming border. And <laughs> here you are. In a, you know what? This actually tracks. This is pretty on brand for both of us here. So it's good. So, so uh, moving right along, though, the, the name Wind Surge. I remember we talked about two things there. One, obviously, wind is related to the development of Wichita as a city. And then surge sort of relates to the, the direction that Wichita is moving as a city more metaphorically. Yep. Can you talk about the conversations that sort of led to, you know, that combination of words becoming the name for the team? Yeah, well, as this keeps coming up, I'm sure as you, you will always talk to people about minor league baseball names, about sports team names of, across every sport. It is hard to lock down to trademark a name. Mm. Um, and there were, um, there were hundreds and hundreds of names that were, that were considered. Uh, I remember seeing the, the reports that came back from trademark attorneys and they basically give you this kind of, you know, you have a 20% risk. If you go with this, you've got an 80% risk. If you go with this, because these names are already associated with the uh, camping equipment or, you know, t-shirts or whatever it might be. But wind surge um, basically was, and I think you nailed it, about the power of the wind across the prairie out there, right? It also speaks to the future, wind-generated turbines. Um, it's a very powerful image, and it's something that you cannot escape when you are in that part of the country. Um, and surging ahead, uh, it's very valiant. It is, again, aspirational. 
It's powerful in every conceivable sense. So you merge those two things together and you get wind surge. And I can't help but thinking, Paul, of having been brought in by the NBA in 2007, 2008, whenever that was, when the Seattle Supersonics moved to Oklahoma City Thunder and being part of, you know, one of these, my designs were rejected, but uh, being asked to take a stab at what would become the Oklahoma City Thunder. And then, and in this case as well, what visually embodies weather, right? Hmm. You can do lightning bolts, but lightning is not thunder display portraying the wind mm -hmm. <laughs> in some mm -hmm. way shape or form uh is a difficult thing to do uh i think our friend dan simon did something like that pretty well in trenton right yes yeah for <laughs> sure for sure yeah it's so, sort of representing thunder as sort of this menacing character almost exactly yeah. um but anyway in the case of wichita uh all about the the the, the winds out there and again this very powerful thing yeah so you had there's some other logos that go with this. I wanted to talk to because I don't I don't I don't get to have like really nerdy conversations about typography ever. So you know people always well, you and I here we could we could make this an hour long episode. We like episode fifty eight. <laughs> that's when we talk about ligatures. That's that's yes. the episode. But the the typography in this logo is not like a traditional baseball script. Um, it's a it's a much more sort of contemporary feeling, and it's you know got this sort of visual element of the the sort of swoosh in there. Can you talk about the decision to, to go with a, a more sort of angular type rather than, you know, a more like baseball script? Yeah. So there is a uh, neighborhood uh, directly adjacent to where the ballpark is called the Delano neighborhood as in okay. Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And uh, there's a great deal of uh, Art Deco influence there. Um, so if you look at the logo, you look at the streamlined aspects of the headwear mark, the WS, for instance. If you look at the uh, italicized letter forms, which are kind of getting, you know, tilted by the wind, um, moving forward, very resolute. Uh, it's very influenced by Art Deco. Some of the letter forms that I have seen out there, some of the architecture and civic, uh, you know, the look of civic stuff out there. So that is why we went where we did. Um, the ballpark, by the way, is quite spectacular, uh, as you know, and probably some of your listeners, but not all of them might know. This was originally uh, designed to be a triple A ball club mm -hmm. with the reorganization of baseball that you referenced right out of the chute. Uh, they became a double A franchise, but it is a, a very spacious, very contemporary, modern facility. I got the construction tour uh, when, when the club announced the name, this is back in 20, November, 2019, I mean, you know, clubhouse practically built to major league standards, but there's a lot of art in there and it's kind of a funky city. There's some murals, there's a great art and design scene there. Um, and, um, that's why the logo looks like it does. I went for a run along the river when we were there. Well, well, so let me tell you, you, you said, yes, I do. I do know the baseball park there. I know the baseball park because, we it was one of our stops on my annual baseball palooza road trip that I take with college buddies, you know, friends from 25 years ago. Every year we do a minor league baseball trip that we call baseball palooza. We pick four different cities and we see a minor league baseball game in each one uh, over the course of four days. In 2021, we went to a Wichita wind surge game, and I usually get to sort of I have a heavy hand in planning this schedule. I think just because they sort of trust me with it. I'm and that so, guy too, by the way. I am <laughs> it, that guy. It's good to be that guy. I like being that guy. And you know, you 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 put out the you put the Google Doc out there, and you're like, all right, here's all the proposed itineraries. What works for everyone? Can everyone get there by airplane? And so, so anyway, in the itinerary that I put forth for 2021, we we visited uh, Wichita, and the guys were all very impressed with the ballpark, and it was a great time at the at the stadium. There was not. I'm going to use a phrase that I learned from you that I really like. There was not a lot of emotional equity with the team, right? Like nobody in our group has any connection really to the Midwest at all. Certainly, the wind surge had not been around long enough for anyone to really grow attached to them in any way. And so, these guys, the first thing we do when we get to a, a new ballpark is we go hit the team store. And I usually try to get something every time I go. I'm wearing the shirt right now that I got when I was there. Everybody walked into this team store. Every single one of these guys, even people who have since said to me, I didn't expect to buy something in this store. And they they went in and everyone in the group bought at least one thing. 
some of them multiple things, right? Like, because I think they were just surprised by how much they liked the brand, right? Because, you know, it just was, it was one they were not familiar with. And you go into the team store and they've got all this beautiful gear. And so, so we sort of hit the team store pretty hard. So this, this new brand that they weren't, you know, super familiar with obviously made an impact. And it was one that everyone has enjoyed. In particular, one of the logos that I really liked was the one that they use on their Helmet Sunday. As you know, I collect these Helmet Sundays. And the one that they use on the Helmet Sunday, at least right now, at the time of this recording, I haven't seen any other ones, is the logo that you created that is based on the city flag for Wichita, which is a, which is a really striking flag. You know, not every city flag is good, right? But this is one worthy of, of a logo. And so you sort of incorporated that city flag, the design elements of that city flag, with a baseball rather than the uh, visual element that they have on the city flag, and then incorporated it, incorporated it into the shape of uh, the home plate. Can you talk about the choice to make one of the logos in the suite represent the city flag for Wichita? Yeah, I mean, you said earlier that uh, you and I, we are both design geeks, design nerds, and most design geeks are also flag geeks, okay? Exologists. Yes, thank you. And so to your to this point, last week I was in Texas and New Mexico. Two great state flags, right? Mm, mm. But I digress. The Wichita <laughs> flag, for those who are not familiar with the Wichita flag, you hit on it. It is striking. It gets very high marks from people like us for being super interesting. Uh, I would urge anybody who's, you know, who's not familiar with it and is intrigued, go take a look. Um, so the genesis of that particular mark uh, lies in the very beginning of the franchise. When they announced the shift from New Orleans, they needed a placeholder logo. So I developed this home plate because home plate is a very recognizable baseball thing, and it speaks to home. It's a new home. I sound like George Carlin here for a second, <laughs> but it's got a lot of very positive attributes and not a lot of uh, barriers in terms of uh, learning, right? Yeah. Uh, when you combine in the center of the Wichita flag, there is a circle that contains a Zia. Speaking of the New Mexico flag, mm -hmm. you have those in Colorado as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so I replaced that with a baseball. It's got these rays and all of a sudden it comes together. It's kind of like, you know, duh, it just makes so much sense. So the original placeholder mark before the club was named uh for promotional stuff things around town uh the nascent website it was wichita 2020 even though mm -hmm. they started playing in 2021 so that uh original mark morphed into what became an alternate mark now moving back for just a second i love hearing the fact that you and your your buddies you know something for everybody there it is a very deep robust series of assets mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. with this club. I mean, there are secondary logos. There is a bespoke font that I developed, um, you know, that's seen all over the place. It's got, I think, a pretty versatile color scheme. And not every team does that. Uh, mm -hmm. And I always think about the fact that here we go, I'm wearing this New Orleans baby cakes thing. New Orleans is you know, the Mardi Gras colors of uh, purple, green, and yellow. Yeah. Not everybody looks awesome in purple, you know? <laughs> I mean, you can put it on black like I'm sure. wearing and, sure. you know, it's it's uh, it, it's wearable. Yeah. But the uh, navy blue and red um, speak to kind of traditional baseball colors. Boston Red Sox, Lou and part of his group, New England people from Rhode Island. So Lou's first uh, position as a young man was with the Pawtucket Red Sox. And then you get the uh, yellow, which is, you know, kind of Kansas uh, or Wichita State University uses this golden yellow. It's the color of wheat. It's the color of a sunset out there. And these skies, these azure blue skies, which there are certain parts of this country that the sky really hits differently. And that is one of them. So you put those colors together. I just went off on a tangent for you. But I love this tangent giving you so some much. Good info. I I love yeah. this tangent. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So that's where all of that comes from. And they harmonize very nicely. They do. They do. Well, and, and it's, you know, when they come together, you know, each individual color has significance, which I love, but then they come together and they're the primary colors, right? Like that's your red, yellow, and blue. Yeah. And, and one more thing, if you, and this is something, I, this is the way I have always designed. Uh, imagine 
any sports logo, any good sports logo. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And hopefully that includes the wind surge. Of course. Uh, blink your eyes and convert this to grayscale. Make believe yeah. you're a dog and you cannot see in color. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You've got a dark, you've got a middle ground, you've got a medium, and you've got a light that is mm-hmm. not white. Mm-hmm. If you go back to color, blink again, we're back in color. You've got a very dark, you've got something that's vibrant, you've got something that's neutral, and you've got what we might call a pop color in that yellow. Something with a with a little bit of uh, you know uh, oomph to it, so you get all those together and you've got a very nice recipe. I can't believe we're giving this away for free. Is the thing right? Like why? Yeah, well, why? I thought you were charging for this. This one. was I thought- this was a, a, a lesson in logo design here from the great Todd Radom, and <laughs> and it's free. This content's free, everybody. But hey, rate, review, and subscribe, please. <laughs> there you go. Um, you know the thing as you were talking about the the primary colors here for for Wichita, and and I I love this lesson of you know desaturate and then resaturate to sort of envision you know the 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 levels of the colors that you're describing. Before you were talking about that, you were just you know you were talking about how you landed on the colors that that turned out to be the primary colors. The baby cakes were almost, they were this close. They were just like a little bit more red in that yellow from being the, uh, the all the secondary colors of purple, green, and orange. So, but yeah. they're purple, green, and yellow. So that was almost a great moment for for color theory nerds, but the, the yellow in the baby cakes logo ruined it. So Todd, this is, uh, this, this part of this conversation has been fantastic. I, you know, I always, I always know I'm going to love talking to you about design things. I do, before I let you go though, I want to talk about this other alternate brand that's relatively recent from the wind surge we were talking in the sort of pre-interview about how it's unusual for the creator of the the primary identity for a team to also work on an alternate identity i don't know if that's entirely unusual but often you know maybe the alternates will be done by either a different firm or in-house or you know whatever you worked with them on this very different Turbo Tubs logo that they just unveiled that also ties back to some historical methods of transportation associated with Wichita. So how, first of all, you know, I feel like I'm leading the witness here since we already talked about this, but can you talk about your involvement with the, the, the Turbo Tubs and the team's decision overall to sort of create the Turbo Tubs brand? So earlier on, you discussed the fact that uh, the primary look is, you know, it's, it's, it's it's a little more major league, as we said, a little less of what one might see in a minor league club, a little more serious. How about mm-hmm. that? Right. Mm-hmm. Serious is the austere. word, I think. Yeah, yeah a little more. A little austere more is a good one. Yeah. So it, throughout, like right out of the beginning of this process, we were going to have a an alternative look that was not as serious. That was mm-hmm. just out and out silly for the sake of it that maybe had a little bit more of a tacit appeal to youth uh, a little more typical so because you know in sports but particularly in minor league baseball you don't want to leave people behind right mm-hmm. it's all about fun mm-hmm. and so uh our friend bob Moulet, uh kind of i'm gonna say he led the charge with this part of it and i'm thinking of lou and and uh annie life who you know was was part of the leadership team there and a couple of other people and they were like, you know, kind of like, let let the kids play, right? It's the let the kids play thing. So <laughs> a more youthful thing, um, an alternative identity, was uh, it was going to be, uh, you know, the, the turbo tubs. And I guess if I'm recalling this correctly, and it's been three years, so forgive my sketchy, I'm, I'm you know, it's a vault up here, Paul. But, <laughs> but. There's so much that, information there. Yeah, and and a lot of it is useless. So trying to remember <laughs> the useful stuff is sometimes a challenge. But uh, there was a there is a race down the river there of people in bathtubs, like this kind of like you know kind of silly civic thing that they do. So it's a real thing. So the idea was, and I I remember Bob's uh, vision of this, a sketch that he came up with, kind of like a composite. A uh, series of of images, found images of a bathtub with a with a <laughs> sail, like a sailboat. Of course, because uh, of the wind. Yeah, because of, and but there are like because of the avi- aviation industry, uh, there are turbo boosters that are going to kick in in the back of this bathtub, <laughs> and it's being skippered by a little troll because yeah. there's something out there that I would urge everybody to look at about a river troll by the foot of the bridge. 
uh, right near the ballpark in Wichita. So you combine all of these things and sometimes getting all these disparate things into one package is a, it's a pretty difficult thing. So what does the troll look like? What does the bathtub look like? What does the sail look like? What are the turbo boosters? How about the flame shooting out of there? What is he against? So that, you know, there's some uh, context that it's yeah. within water. Yeah. So it winds up being a lot of things, but uh, we kind of got it together. And if you look at that troll, I will tell you right now that throughout the process, I had the image of Mr. Magoo uh, in my head. I can see it. I can see it. This, this, you know, guy with like squinty eyes. Yeah. But he's got a captain's hat, right? Yeah. And yeah. he's behind the wheel of, <laughs> you know, of the ship. And there are a couple of a uh, couple of views. There's a straight on. There's an angular one. So a lot going on and very fun and certainly a very liberating color palette with uh to work with and the palette is inspired by these beautiful sunsets out there purples and yellows and oranges and you combine that with some aqua which is really always cool thinking of the old marlins and charlotte hornets and all that stuff mm -hmm. how to get that back in there so a very <laughs> vibrant al alternate identity it is vibrant and it's fun yeah. and it's and it's it is on the scale of austere to wacky which by the way is the news how i'm going to define this this scale is your word austere to wacky it's way farther over on the, the the wacky end of the spectrum so it must have been you used the word liberating it must have been really fun for you to work on something you know a little where you could sort of let your hair down a little bit yeah i don't often get called on to do stuff like that so it was a good challenge and it's like all right i am just gonna like let it all hang out let the hair come down as you just said uh, and just go with it and have fun and kind of surrender to the wackiness in a big way. So it's like, not only are we going to have a troll and he's going to be green and he's going to be <laughs> surrounded by purple and aqua yeah. and all these really cool colors that I don't often get to work with, yeah. but he's going to look like Mr. Magoo and he's going to have a captain's hat. And on the bathtub, <laughs> it says, you know, the airport abbreviation for Wichita, like, let's just throw it all in there. Right. But it's still got to work and it's yeah. still got to work on headwear and it's got to work across all these things. And the uniforms just look spectacular and all credit to Bob and, you know, uh, the, 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 my friends with the club. The colors on the uniform are just like such a treat, right? Like, I mean, it's, that's, you know, I wish that the turbo tubs had been around when I visited Wichita, because I definitely would have gotten some of this gear too. Probably better for my wallet that they weren't, but I'm, I expect well, you're, that. It's a return visit is what it is, Paul. Absolutely. It's a return visit. And it's, you know, it's, it's a worthy of a return visit because it's such a beautiful ballpark there. So we stayed in the hotel right across the river. And so when it came time to go to the game, we just walked across the bridge and we were right there. It was everything about it was great. So yeah, I love um, it. And, and it's, it's a, uh, to your point with that, they've got bicycle racks because you can, you can walk or bike to the game. Yep. Um, and there's going to be some development around the ballpark, which will tie it to the downtown area even more closely. Yeah. So I have not yet been out there for a game, but I'm really looking forward to it. And I've been invited out there. Um, and uh, again, it's timing hasn't been right, but I'm going to do it. Well, I hope you'll let me know when that happens, because I, I can get to Wichita fairly easily from Fort Collins, Colorado. So, uh, you know, let, let me know when you're on your way to Wichita. I almost... Kiana Sinks let me know when you were going to be there at the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum working with uh, Bob Kendrick and and her on the LIDS project that we will also need to talk about at some point. I almost just showed up as a like a, a wallflower there just to, you know, be be the fly on the wall to to listen in on that conversation, because that must have been amazing. But that is it was it was it was a, it was a quick day. Very. I'll keep it brief because probably going over time. But uh that day there were uh, casey got seven inches of snow <laughs> like that morning yeah so i fly fly to kansas city i'm like this is never gonna happen it was just a one-day trip yeah i'm like i am not getting there it yeah. was fine here in new york fly yeah. out of LaGuardia. forget get to kansas city land i'm like looking out the window it looks like siberia just this flat gray sky seven inches of fresh fallen snow took me like an hour and a half to get an uber downtown so we did this thing very early the next day, flew home right after that. But it was so great to see Kiana, to see my dear friend, Bob Kendrick, who I've known, as I always say, for 25 years. And there is never a bad day at the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum, whatever the weather. 
Absolutely. hundred percent. I've been there three times. I had the pleasure of meeting Bob Kendrick a couple of times, got to interview him for sportslogos.net. Kiana Sinks was a guest on the podcast not too long ago. And so, yeah, that the, the Negro leagues baseball museum folks are absolutely terrific. And I, I had huge FOMO that day when all these photos of the three of you were going up and I was just like, oh, I should have found a way to crash that party. But uh, <laughs> uh, anyhow, that is a subject of a conversation for another day. Todd, thank you so much. I had planned a certain amount of time for this conversation, but I always know that they're going to go long. And I love that they go long because they're fun conversations. You are genuinely a superstar in the world of, of sports graphic design. You're so kind and generous with your time. I always appreciate it so much. I can't wait for episode 58 on ligatures. And thank you again for your time and all the work that you do for uh, sports design. Paul, thank you for all of those kind words. I appreciate it. I appreciate you, my friend. Uh, maybe we need uh, an interim bet- before 58. We can talk about a whole bunch of other things. A Carolina League logo from 1993 that you have probably not familiar with. We'll talk about it. That sounds like an amazing idea. I love this idea. We'll, we'll, we'll get another episode in there. And hey, if we can find a way to record an episode with the little microphone that I got that fits in my iPhone live at a game over a couple of beers and a couple of helmet Sundays, even better. Hey, even better. Even better. Thank you, Todd. Thanks, Paul. All right, everyone. Welcome back. Super excited right now to be joined by Bob Moulet, Director of Fan Experience with the Wichita Wind Surge. Bob, we've spoken once before for the article that I wrote on the Wind Surge back in 2021, way back in 2021 with the, uh, with the rebrand for the Wind Surge. And we had a great conversation then, and I remember you were, very, uh, you were super passionate about what this nickname meant to Wichita as a city. Yeah. So I just wanted to, to start with that. Could you tell me sort of the significance sort of metaphorically of wind surge as a nickname for Wichita. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, the kind of going through that, that whole planning process of the wind surge is obviously we know there's no such thing as a wind surge. There's a, there's a storm surge. Um, you know, people like to, you know, take things literally a little bit, but in minor league baseball, you can really change things around just like, uh, we did in new Orleans with baby cake. There's no such thing as a baby cake either. Um, but, you know, as far as kind of, you know, the name that came with wind surges is we were going through kind of our research is it's a little bit of a, a blend of the past to the future. So, you know, you take the wind um, lately in the last couple of weeks here, the wind has been very prevalent. Um, but that wind is also, you know, put Wichita on the map as being, you know, the air capital of the world, you know, the Chisholm Trail with the wind wagons, those types of things. And so, you know, as we we're going through our branding process with that, we wanted to um obviously pay homage to that because that was a history however you know especially with a lot of wichitans and everything that has happened in in the last 10 to 15 years the city is really kind of pushing itself forward right so wichita is you know the 51st first largest city according to the uh, census in the nation you know the things that we're doing here especially with this ballpark uh build and the development around the river and stuff there's kind of was a sense of uh wichita going from maybe going at about 50 miles per hour to now we're up to 80 to 90. So uh, you're trying to figure out a way to personify something that you can't see. And so uh, people are, you know, kind of using the term surge. We're really surging forward. We're in that like exponential phase right now where we're growing. And so we were like kind of trying to figure out how we blend the past with the future. And uh, that's where the term wind surge came from. And so, um, that's really wind surge uh, is more of an idea of where we are at this point in time. And also uh, we wanted to create a brand that was going to be timeless and classic. And as you know, um, with logos, you know, through, through the history of logos, as well as Todd does is, you know, logos and, and, and team names, they're all kind of part of, especially in the minor league realm, they're all part of uh, the same thing as like fashion and art. And there's, there's decades of what works more and what doesn't, right? We're seeing these late eighties, early nineties uh, styles come back into that process. And so we wanted to have something for the city because this is the only affiliated traditional sport uh, in the city of Kansas. We wanted to have something that was major league, but was going to be timeless and classic. And so that's why we decided to go, with the term wind surge. So uh, 
you know what i one of the things that todd and i talked about was the fact that it you know this this franchise went from the new orleans baby cakes which is the, the poster child for the era of the the wacky logo and nickname to uh you know working with todd radom just by virtue of the fact that you contacted Todd and said, we want to work with you, you end yeah. up with a much more serious logo than some of these other minor league brand. And that's not a qualitative judgment. That's, that's just to say, you know, there's sort of a spectrum of wacky to not wacky. Yeah. Austere, I think was the word that, that, that Todd used. What was it that you all were thinking when, when you went into this process with, you know, we're going to, we're going to, step away from the, the the wackiness of the previous iteration of this franchise and into a more serious looking brand. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I'd be honest with you for, for a person who helped kind of, you know, with the unveil of the cakes at first, the process was a little bit difficult for me just because being in that minor league realm. Um, and I think Todd really just did such a great job of kind of explaining the optics of, you know, from the looks, the feels, the, you know, the naming and that process. Um, but again, I think, you know, we, we treat Riverfront Stadium as, you know, a, a major league caliber field. And so with a major league caliber field, you're going to want to have a name that um, is going to be reflective of, of kind of that time and what will go through the eras, right? I, I firmly believe as we went to go name this, we're going to be here for 30 years and hopefully at the uh, 25th year when our, when our option is is up to go five more, we decide to go 30 more or whatever it is. But uh, I think the goal was, you know, you have the Red Sox, you have the Yankees, you have the Cubs, you have those teams, the Giants, the Dodgers, you know, those are the very teams that have withstood the test of time. And I think that's what we were trying to go for, for this brand. And that was the major adjustment is that this is Wichita's major league entertainment at an affordable rate, because it's still minor league baseball, where we wanted to carry ourselves as that's, that's what it was. Sure. Well, and so not only did you switch from as a franchise from the new Orleans baby cakes to the Wichita wind surge, but the city itself, the most recent iteration of baseball in Wichita was the Wichita wing nuts. And so not only did you go away from the independent Wichita wing nuts as a city with their older ballpark, but you have this, you referenced this brand new, beautiful ballpark which I had the pleasure of visiting during our uh, 2021 baseball Palooza road trip. And it's a beautiful ballpark. I mean, it was just a, a, a fantastic place to watch a game. We stayed in the hotel right across the river. So you could see the ballpark from the hotel. Yeah. Uh, you, you're talking about the, the advancements that Wichita has made as a city, but the baseball team and that ballpark in particular feel like they're part of the advancements that that, that city is making. Yes. Um, and, and I think that's, what's the most important part is that, you know, the, the ballpark itself has allowed for the future development that's going to happen around the area, right? Um, and it's really going to draw people kind of down to the downtown area. Um, you know, when I got here three years ago, first thing I heard, uh, you know, about the city of Wichita was there's an east sider and there's a west sider and they're all, the river is what depicts what that is, right? And this project takes the East Siders and the West Siders and gives them all an excuse to come down in the same area. Not to say they don't like each other or not, but I can go get the same department store stuff on the East side that I can on the West side, but we wanted to make sure that we had something that was really Wichita's front porch. And, you know, Lou Schweckheimer, our late managing partner and owner, really pushed, you know, the front porch, just a gathering place, whether you're going to come see a baseball game, a concert, a football game, or those types of things, the stadium is really kind of the catalyst that's building out everything. And, in the last three years that I've been here, because I was actually the second one um, on the ground in the trailer as the as the building was getting pulled up, I've just seen tremendous growth in the area just because of the the footprint of the baseball field itself or stadium, Riverfront Stadium. But uh, you know, we're actually going to develop here uh, a hotel right behind me, um, probably by that's going to start here probably at least midsummer and summer, um, and then that's just going to continue to build and 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 really kind of showcase what the downtown area is so well it's you know i mean it's like i said it was a terrific experience for us i told todd the story about how the guys on the baseball palooza trip went into the the team store not expecting to buy much and just being sort of blown away by all the great yeah. paraphernalia in there so it's you know the brand really really appeals i think sort of at, at at first glance right like i mean you walk in and you're just like wow this is a, this is a strong brand i'm yeah. curious to know 
you know, there's a, there's a rich baseball history in Wichita. I, I mentioned the wing nuts, obviously the Wranglers were the most recent uh, affiliated team there. I'm curious to know what the reaction has been locally to the new team. Yeah. I mean, I, I think uh, for the most part, I'd say 95% of the people are excited that they have affiliated baseball back, right? Uh, they know the difference between affiliated baseball, and non-affiliated baseball. Uh, you know, those who went to the old Lawrence Dumont, um, look, Lawrence Dumont was a great facility for the time that it served, just like a lot of other communities that have older ballparks and, you know, that hosted the NBC and stuff like that. But when people walk into this facility, I, I've heard people literally say, I didn't know Wichita could get something as great as this. And, you know, that's something to be said about what we, we were planning on doing here. And I think people realizing, hey, we're in a good, you know, good situation. And, you know, with the team name, like, you know, just like any team name, especially New Orleans or, or anywhere I've ever seen, like, we, we could have probably said we were going to be the Wichita Royals, which this is royal country. And people are, oh, that's not original or this or whatever. But, you know, I always talk about this, especially when um, I go to uh, classes and talk about the brand, right? You know, the brand isn't just the name. It's not just the it's not just the colors. It's not just the logos. The brand is how you make people feel. And I think when people walk into Riverfront Stadium, they already get the good feels. They have the uh, kind uh, customer service from the part time associates and everything like that. They really uh, they really are excited to be out here. Like some you know, might never like the name, you know, just like some never like the baby cakes name. And then some have fully embraced it as their team. I'll tell you our guy, um, his name is uh, Jeffrey Lutz. He's our music engineer. You know, he, at first, when he heard the name, you know, I, I, I know, cause we've had conversations. He wasn't exactly uh, particularly happy with it, but at the, over time, he said, you know what? I've gone on to really embrace this name because this is our team. And this is what we have. And I want to take advantage of that process. Have you found that you have had to brush up on your Greek mythology to explain the uh, the myth of Pegasus to everyone? Oh, yes. I mean, it's a whole spiel to go over the Pegasus, harnessing the wind, you know, surging through any endeavor. Yes, all, the, all those things. Um, and it's a narrative. Now, I'll say is w- when we do explain what the exact narrative is, and I know it takes a little while, people get it. They understand. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, wow, this is bigger than just oh, this is a wind sock, and that's, it's a socks, the logo, you know what I mean? They, they, they get it, and they really embrace it and go, wow, that's really cool, because when you make them understand that they're part of that transformation process, and this is, includes them in that identity, then they really get on board. Well, I've always said, you know, I mean, one of my favorite things about minor league baseball logos is it helps you sort of understand, you know, the history of America. You know, you learn about America one city at a time by understanding yeah. why minor league teams are called what they're called. Obviously, with Wichita, you know, I've learned so much about, you know, the aviation industry and, you know, everything, everything that comes with this, this notion of the wind surge and, and even the, the size of the city relative to other cities in, in America. But I, I particularly enjoy that I've had to learn a little bit of Greek mythology as well to, yes. to fully appreciate this brand. So you have this very serious, austere primary identity. And then, yes. of course, you have this, this newly unveiled at the time of yes. this recording, newly un- unveiled alternate identity can you tell me about your thinking behind the the turbo tubs uh yeah i mean uh i think uh so the turbo tubs concept and i don't know if todd kind of talked about the turbo tubs concept kind of went in tandem with the wind search concepts uh you know we went through the wind search branding process and uh you know i i obviously went through it and i, and I believed it but i was also like hey you know, I, I still want to try to have a connection to minor league. Let's not take ourselves too serious and let's go through this process. And uh, Lou, let me go with it. And uh, I still have the proof. I have my, uh, I still have the Photoshop concept that I gave to Todd. I don't know if you've talked to, talked to you about that. No, and, he did uh, not. And uh, I have the Photoshop concept. I went online, I picked a couple things and, and I just said, hey, you know, I want to make sure you know, whatever we decide to do, whether we decide to go with the wind surge brand or whatever, that we're just checking all the boxes. And, you know, when we went through the turbo tubs, obviously turbo tubs is very minor league. It fits in with the persona of what that looks like right now. Um, but also wanted to make sure that the narrative was easily identifiable to tie into if we we're going to use this, whether it's going to be a main brand, alternate brand or something like that. And so going through that research process, uh, with the various um, focus groups and stuff, you know, 
they had talked about tub races. You know, they talked about there's actually a statue of a 200 pound troll that's under the, you know, that's under the river bridge. You got to be on top to see him peering up and everything like that. And I thought that'd be really cool to kind of tie this brand in and uh, figure out how we can tell the story. And um, that's kind of really how we worked on it. And we went back and forth. And I remember the first mock-up sketches were the same wind surge, red, white, and blue sketch. We're like, yeah, that just doesn't look right for this right here. And so as we kind of went on and we worked back and forth and I'll tell you, that's really where um, me and Todd really bonded over that project. Not to, to say that we didn't on the, on the wind surge project, but this one was really where we got to have a lot of fun with it. And we both got to really get to know each other's kind of creativity and, and experience. And, you know, obviously I have the utmost respect for what Todd has done in his career with everything he's done. And I'm just kind of this minor leaguer guy that's helped with the baby cakes and stuff like that. But, uh, it was really great to get it where it was and, and, and we got it really was, and we were just really excited about it. And we just weren't sure what we we're going to do. So I know there's a, you know, one of your brands that Todd did not work on was the, the Copa de la Diversión brand that you all have, which is the Tumba Vacas, which is an right. upside down cow. And uh, he's, 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 he's taken a tumble, I guess the Tumba Vacas has taken yeah. a tumble here. So can you tell me about the origin of, of that nickname and what that means to Wichita? Yeah, so um, this was a project actually that uh, uh, Cookie Rojas, who was part of our staff at the time, worked on in the 2020 season. Obviously, we, the season got canceled, but we were looking to do a Copa identity. And so he kind of started, uh, we got, you know, a Latino Hispanic chamber panel together and they started going through that process uh, to get the naming. And uh, Tumas Vacas actually translates to cow tippers. So that's why the upside down cow is what it is. Um, there's a lot of iterations of it. There was one with a with a rope around it and things like that. Uh, and uh, we decided to take the rope out just due to current uh, events at the point in time because we didn't want to seem like it was anything other than what it needed. We thought we can explain what that process would look like, you know, with the logos. And so where I kind of came in was once we kind of got the name figured out, uh, we went through that whole branding logo process and in the details. And you know, with the Copa identities, they're very vibrant and. Uh, you know, we did a lot of research on it. And here in, in Wichita, um, it's, it's primarily of, of the Latinos, it's primarily Hispanic, mm -hmm. um, which is Mexican. And uh, so that's what we were trying to go for. Uh, as uh, Alvin Garcia, who's a promotional uh, coordinator, but also really helped with the brand of the Tumbas Vacas, would say that uh, it, it pays homage to the, to the, to the, uh, the Charos. I can't maybe pronounce it as, as well as he can. <laughs> um, but, it, you know, it, it, it pays kind of homage to that. And, you know, you see the vibrant neon uh, greens and, and the pinks, and then you kind of tone it down with the blacks and the golds and the gold represent the lasso and, and those types of things. But uh, it's a really great, vibrant brand. Um, it's been received very well. Uh, people love it. And uh, one funny story about it was we were, wanted to be in the 2021 COPA program. But we had had to put it on the back burner because, you know, staffing and those types of things. And then obviously with the major league take over the minor leagues, you had five people on staff. And then they wanted to go and say, hey, major league, uh, major league baseball is like, you guys are participating in the Copa this year. We're like, oh, we just don't have the bandwidth to do it right. We didn't just want to throw out a uniform set and everything like that. Unfortunately, it passed the new era threshold to put them out. So we actually were selling uh Tumas Vacas hats for a whole season and no one really knew what it was they just knew that it was Wichita it says Cobo you know Cobo Wichita on the title or anything like that but we sold those hats out with no explanation and then we <laughs> finally this year got to roll into getting a, a great unveil as well and obviously due to some supply chain issues we had to keep pushing that unveil back we, we had planned to do one uh, in the ballpark a really big blowout and everything but we we're able to do a really cool video and do it but uh it was, it's been a great project. It's been great. It's been very well received. We were actually supposed to do our first Tumas Vacas game last night that unfortunately got rained out. So the first one is, uh, you know, scheduled in the next couple of weeks. Awesome. Well, it's a really fun brand. And you mentioned in our sort of pre-interview that that one was created by, by Brandios. And so it's certainly different from the, the other brands that you have, but shows the power of a fun logo, right? That you can yep. sell that out without any explanation. So yeah. That's, a, that's pretty cool. Well, Bob, thanks so much for, for taking the time to join me. Where can people find I, the, the wind surge are easy to find, but where can people find you on social media? Yeah. So you can find me at uh, Bobby Mo show on Twitter. 
Um, and same thing with Instagram. And then obviously you can find me on Facebook, but Facebook's a little bit different, but Twitter, you know, Bobby Mojo is, is what I uh, go under. So. All right. Well, we'll make sure that that's in the show notes and Bob, thanks so much. It was great to talk to you again and congratulations on all the success that the team's had and uh, look forward to talking to you again soon. All right. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Well, let's talk soon. We might have something else up our sleeve. 